Hi everyone and welcome back. Okay, so today I've got a watercolour mixed media painting for you and it's of a nice, very warm looking sunset scene and as you can see there I'm using black ink to create a silhouetted foreground. The ink that I'm using is um, Indian ink. I'll leave all the uh, I'll leave a list of all the products that I'm using um, for this painting in the description below. Uh, if you're interested, you can check them out. Uh, the paper that I'm using is just an offcut of arches, actually. It's um, a small piece of A5, uh, which I cut down from one of my sheets. And um, it's cold pressed, 140 pounds in weight, really nice paper to work on. And the line drawing was done with Pilot drawing pens. Uh, really good pens, actually, completely waterproof ideal for um, pen and wash style paintings like this. Now these silhouette paintings are really easy to do, really good ones for beginners because basically it's just a, you know, a black shape isn't it, we haven't got any shading or tones or colours to worry about at all. Just that simple dark silhouette in the foreground uh, and that's all it is. The painting didn't take me very long at all. Now the video is only 10 minutes long so the full lesson will be over on my Patreon channel as always. Um, and I'll leave the links in the description below and in the end screen cards as well for you. And this will probably be a good one for you to do if you're following along with Inktober as well. Um, I don't know if it follows any of the prompts um, for this October's Inktober, but I haven't really had a look. But I mean, you might be able to use it for something, I don't know. I keep telling myself that every year I must do Inktober and I never get around to it. I said to myself this year, you know, let's make an effort, let's do Inktober and uh, I just haven't got the time to do it. I've got just too many commitments over on Patreon, you know, with all the graphite and the watercolours and everything. Um, so I think doing an ink drawing every single day, or even once a week, um, you know, if you're busy, it can take a lot of effort really, can't it? Now as you can see, the foreground's building up nicely. It looks a bit um, sort of patchy at the minute, but I'm just using almost like a very, very light stippling uh, brush stroke there just to create just a little bit of fine texture and now I'm going back in with one of the pilot pens that I mentioned at the start of the video there what I've done the line drawing with just to close some of those gaps up a little bit um, and create that sort of texture there of that beach area now I'm going to use a wet into wet technique for the sky um, I'm only going to actually use three colours for that uh, but before I get painting it I need to wet the paper all over first but before you do this um, if you're using Indian ink from a bottle, um, just give it a good sort of 15-20 minutes just to dry properly. Um, because at this stage you'll soon find out, you know, if there's any wet areas left on the ink. You know, they'll smear right across the paper uh, with that wet brush. So always just give it a little bit of time just to dry first. I'm trying to preserve a white area there in the centre of the painting. Um, you know, that's where the sun's going to be. And because we wet the paper first of all before applying the paint, it means we should get you know virtually a seamless transition there between the white paper and the yellow paint, and it should, um, well hopefully it should, you know really look like a nice glow in the sky there, right in the centre of the painting. Now I should just quickly mention as well um, that the colours that you see there look a little bit washed out compared to the finished painting because um, the way the camera is picking you know the image up um, and the way that the LED daylight bulb is shining on that what's happening is as, it, as the light is shining through you know the layers of paint and hitting the white paper there um, it kind of makes the colours look a little bit washed out and not quite as strong and as vibrant as they are in real life so you know the the final shot of this painting right at the end will be a much truer representation um, of how the colours really look now the paper's starting just to dry out a little bit now, so I'm having to act pretty quick now to get this sky in before it completely dries. And once it's perfectly dry, um, then we can start going on with the dry brush work uh, for the distant hills there. Now it looks like that's the ink that I'm using, but it's not actually, it's just very dark watercolour. And I've switched over from the uh, big flat brush there to a size 8 brush now. And I keep mentioning these brushes actually in the videos, in my watercolour videos that I keep making. And uh, they're by a company called eBoot. And they're very, very cheap. You can get them on Amazon and again I'll leave links uh, below for them. I'm totally impressed with them. Um, they're some of the cheapest brushes I've found. 
Um, but if you didn't know the price of them, and somebody put one of these in your hand and said, um, you know, is this an expensive brush or a cheap brush? You'd say, well, it's, you know, it's kind of a mid-price to an expensive nylon brush. You know, that's really what it feels like. It uh, really sort of outpunches its price range. So I really do recommend these e-boot brushes. They're really good for detailed work and fine work as well because they have a really nice point on them. And um, the handles are very, very comfortable as well. Um, the shape that they are, um, lower down towards the bristles, the wood is kind of shaped, um, sort of in, in like a, a curved triangular kind of shape. And for some reason, I just find them really, really comfortable to use. I mean, let's face it, you know, I mean, watercolour painting can get expensive, you know. Um, it can be as cheap or as, as dear as you want it to be, really, I guess. But, um, you know, if you're buying good quality materials, it can start getting a little bit pricey. So it's really nice and refreshing, you know, that every now and again, a product like this comes onto the market. And, you know, you can buy a really nice set of brushes for next to nothing. And, um, you know, with what you save on the brushes, you can now invest in better quality paper, which I always recommend. Um, you know, I'd never cut corners with watercolour paper at all. Um, I always try and use the best that I can afford. I did used to use Bockingford, which um, wasn't as, um, an artist quality paper. It was more of a student quality paper made from cellulose. Um, and I got used to it, you know, I, it's a, for a cellulose paper, it's a very good paper, but it's kind of changed a little bit over the years and I don't seem to be able to get on with it anymore. Um, and all the other cellulose papers that I've used, you know, they all just feel like sketchbook papers to me. Um, so even though sometimes I use Cotman watercolours, you know, student quality watercolours and very cheap brushes, I always buy the best paper I can afford. I always have done, um, you know, in that respect. Um, it, it makes the biggest difference. It's more important than, um, you know, your brushes or your paint. You know, it's all about the paper, you know, to get the results with watercolour. Okay, so I'm going back in again now um, with a sepia pen. <laughs> These sepia pens that I'm using here, these are the Mitsubishi Uni pin pens. Um, I bought them by mistake. I bought them thinking that they were waterproof. They're only water resistant, so I can't really use them under any washes, but I can certainly use them over the top. Um, so that's what I was using there. Now I'm going in with some pastel pencil to try and get that nice glow where the sun's catching the water and lighting up that area. I'm using Carbothello pastel pencils for that, actually. Um, I basically only use the white, a couple of yellows and an orange, just to enhance um, the area a little bit. So if you're into mixed media, um, watercolour paintings and things like that, again, I highly recommend these Carbothello pastel pencils. Um, they're one of the best that I've found. They work really well and they can enhance your watercolours beautifully, particularly in areas that you're not happy with um, you can just go over them a little bit with these and it just seems to transform them. Okay, so we're just about at the end of the painting now. Um, so don't forget, um, you know, if you want to paint along with this one in real time, the full lesson will be over on my Patreon page along with many other uh, projects, video demonstrations um, in both mixed media, watercolour, graphite. Um, and we've got a fantastic community of people there as well. Really helpful, supportive group of people. Um, and they're all posting work on the community section there. Uh, so that's something you could do as well if you're interested. Okay, so I look forward to seeing you over there. And I'll just let the video play out now. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care everybody. Bye for now.